Say hello to my little friend. Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back to another episode here at the Crow's Nest Railroad. Okay, this week let's talk about the build of this little electric locomotive. Can't cover it all this week, we'll divide this into two episodes. But I ordered a power chassis kit from Maxitrack in the UK and the metal parts and the controller and the motors and the wheels and things like that uh, arrived and that's going to be the basis for this locomotive and then in the second week we'll talk about the actual build of the shell and everything else like that but I was so excited when I got these materials that I just had to try it out and put everything together even though the whole locomotive wasn't finished or even designed yet so Let's start at the beginning and the box of goodies arrive from the UK. Well, here it is all the way from England. This is pretty cool. Let's unpack some things and see what we've got. Okay, so we've got plates for the front and the back. I think they're called buffer beams. Two large heavy plates that are the basic chassis. Motors. The way this is designed there's two motors for each axle. So it'll be an 040. Here's one of the axles. And the two motors will bolt in here and the same with this one. So all four motors will be here underneath. These are the pieces for the couplers. You can see it's cut out so they'll protrude from the beams. Uh, some large wiring. This is the high current side I presume and it's got a breaker on here, a uh, high current breaker. Some suspension goodies so that these things can be spring activated. Some switches. Look at this. This is all pre-wired. I hadn't anticipated that. I thought I'd be getting just a bundle of wire. But they're all crimped. My guess is one of these is a forward and reverse switch. And I'm not sure what the other one is for. I'll find out. Here's the actual speed controller. All the heat sinks on here. And potentiometer to control how much voltage gets sent to the motors. A happy little knob. I don't know what this knob is for. There's already a knob on here. Oh well. And of course, some happy little directions. My plan is to go ahead and assemble all of this. I've got to pick up a small marine battery and I want to see if it's uh, working properly and everything's okay and then I'll tear it apart and then we'll actually build a cab and a housing. I just don't know what style I want yet so I'm gonna kick that can down the road and not make a decision right now but I'm gonna just rough the chassis together get everything mechanically functioning and then we'll go from there so let me dig into the directions I've already read through them but I want to go through a little more carefully now so that I don't hook anything up backwards and let's start assembling this kit let's place the wheel sets down on the bench and these little uh, Delrin gears toward me now let's take the lower chassis plate and we'll lay it on these wheel sets and we'll align the holes. All right, the plates setting on the two wheel sets, the cutouts on the plate are on the gear side. And I just ran these bolts down through here to make sure that the holes all line up. If at first when you put this lower plate on, you can't find the holes, it just needs to be flipped end for end, but you do want the notch on the gear side. 
These aren't tightened or assembled, they're just down through the holes just to roughly orient the wheel set. Then we want to place the front and rear buffer plates and slip them on. This is cut very precisely, so be careful, this edge might be a little sharp. Well, it took me a couple of tries to figure this coupler box out because I wasn't thinking ahead. There has to be a couple of slots in here so that you can have your connecting rod in here. And I was only thinking about these parts in here and I wasn't thinking far enough ahead. So after a few tries and a careful look at the picture, this is how I think this coupler pocket needs to go together so that you've got a bottom plate, a space, middle plate, a space, and your top plate. And then these two bolts go down through. I'm assembling it from the top. I think the directions say to assemble it up from the bottom. The other thing is I have a clevis pin that I use on my cars for the coupling and I had to drill this hole out to accept this quarter inch clevis pin. Grabbed a couple of bolts out of the scrap bin so that I can temporarily hold this top plate to the bottom plate. I'll probably use this to fit some sort of a temporary body on this to hold the battery and there are four holes here that hold this plate into position for now. Okay, time to attach the wheel set frames. It looks like a three-point suspension. There's a bit of rubber tubing on the center and then two springs on the lateral parts of the triangle. Okay, so let's get that done. And we want the Delrin gear positioned on the notch. Well, next, we'll take our three bolts, spacer, and get these motors all mounted. There's a little polarity red dot, and I'm going to keep those oriented all the same to help me out later when I attach the wires. Well, I need a, for my comfort anyway, a non-conductive platform to start assembling the electronicals. And so I had this piece of plywood left over from the flat car that I built. So I just trimmed it to length. Now I have to cut a little bit of a rabbit off the bottom so that it can slip down past a couple of the protrusions on the inside of the buffer plates. So let me stand this piece up and run it through the table saw and cut a little groove on the back and I'll be right back. Okay, there's our little dado there, our little shelf, and that is going to let this slip past this. And then what I'll do is I'll mark the holes here so that I can bolt this down into the chassis. So here's our bottom. It's attached to the top plate on the chassis and it's temporarily screwed in place. Let's take the cutoff that was on our other board and we'll mount this vertically and that way I can mount some of the electronicals to it. All right, we got a little vertical board here, just pocket screwed onto the base and a little 
flat part here to mount um, a couple toggle switches and a potentiometer and then I can mount the circuit board here and I got to find out where I'm going to mount the main fuse so here's my homework I got to go through the circuit diagram and figure out what's going on four motors so here we go got the motor wire soldered in just a side note when I first attached the motors onto the chassis they were extremely tight and I just felt something was wrong I didn't sense that there was any real sliding adjustment to control the lash or the penetration of this little pinion gear into the big gear so I shot off a quick email to Maxitrack and they were kind enough to get right back to me and suggested that I fiddle with the screws just a little bit. Each motor has a three screw mounting and everything seems to be um, predetermined on these fittings. But I went back in, loosened the screws uh, as they suggested, put a little outward pressure on the motor and I tightened the outside screw first, the little bolt away from the big gear on both the motors to give as much spread as I could on the motor shafts and as you can see now that seems to have worked great. There was just enough pressure squeezing this main gear that you could not turn this by hand. It was really stiff. So that's something to check if you're if you're building this. There's no apparent lash adjustment. You have to sort of fiddle with it and make sure that these are not pinching too tight on the gear. Okay, this is an odd looking little duck, but remember it's just a, a testing platform. It's not supposed to look anything like a locomotive now. Just basically a sled with a motor on it. So, I've got two main wires that are going to the four motors and I'm coming up and creating a little bit of a terminal block here against this wooden um, panel. So I've got my plus and minus heading off to the motors. Here is the 16 amp breaker which is essentially a main on off switch and then I've got my direction toggle brake toggle, potentiometer here for speed control, and here is our controller, and we've got connections to the battery here, and to our management side here. So, looks like we've got all of our electronicals set and ready to go, and I've check the diagram multiple times to make sure I don't have anything crisscrossed. What we need now is a small box full of angry pixies. Such as this one. I probably better put a little strip in here or a strap to hold this battery but for now I've got the chassis propped up on a couple of pieces of wood let's hook up the terminals and see if we can let out any of the crazy smoke all right positive negative we're all hooked up fingers crossed let's flip the big switch main breaker on circuit board on, got a light, forward, let's give it some power.
Let's just check some numbers. Here we are 12.58 volts right directly off the battery itself. Let's check voltage to the motors here. Okay, I've got zero volts across the motors, which we would expect. Nothing going on. All right. Let me see what the minimum throttle setting that I can find that keep the wheels turning. All right, I cracked open the throttle. Let's, let's check our running voltage here. Wow. 2.25 volts. That seems pretty good. Just to keep the wheels rolling. That doesn't seem like a lot of resistance. Okay, we're running a little hotter. Six and a half volts. Excellent. And no magic smoke being let out that I can see. No smells, no smoke. That's got to be a good sign. Well, thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot. So, that's as far as we're going to go this week. We'll do some testing of the locomotive. And then we'll have to tear everything apart and start building this actual body so it actually looks like this when we're done. So join me next time right here on the Crow's Nest Railroad.